final score from Chapel Hill, North Carolina, Chelsea 5, Wrexham 0. I'm Mark Griffiths from Wrexham AFC, and let's just remind ourselves of the ground rules of friendlies before we tuck into this one. How do you judge if your pre-season's gone well? If you're ready on the first day of the season. That's the most important consideration. Results in friendlies don't matter. What you get out of friendlies is what matters, either in terms of tactical cohesion or in terms of fitness. And in terms of both those things, and frankly also in terms of performance, Wrexham can be very pleased with this. Don't be confused by that 5-0 scoreline. That was an impressive first public pre-season game for Wrexham. So let's walk through this. Wrexham started off with pretty much the side that beat Bournemouth to win the title, so a very strong team. Chelsea picked a very youthful team, but again, let's keep our perspective, because Chelsea, with their bloated first-team squad and with the amount of money they have available to bring in talent of a youthful side with loads and loads of pe- pedigree. You've got Trevor Chalaber at the back, who's played, what, half last season in the Premier League. You've got up front Jackson, who they've just bought for a lot of money from Villarreal. They've got other quality players like Mark Cucurella, what was he, £40 million that they paid for him from Brighton. They've got Andre Santos, their wonder kid, that they had to loan back to Botafogo for a season to get him his work permit. There was a lot of quality. Two players as well who would make a difference. Cassade, who I think was the best player on the pitch, and Matson, who scored the first two goals, who were both named in the championship t- uh, best 11 for last season while on loan from Chelsea. This was a quality side. No question about it. And we held our own. I wondered, I'll be honest, whether we might have been looking to play uh, you know, as a practice match in terms more of fitness and defensive organisation, Phil Parkson said beforehand that, you know, we'll be working on our defensive shape. Our defensive shape was good, as I'll get to in a moment. But, you know, we didn't park the bus. We certainly didn't, um, even though we went behind in the third minute. And the key thing here, I think you've got to say, is that the Chelsea players have quality and they have the ability to capitalise upon small mistakes, which in League 2, you'll probably get away with. And there was just that extra level of class because these are high quality players that picked us apart third minute Jacob Mendy gets trapped in a press he runs into the trap he's on the halfway line the touchline's cutting off half the pit well he can't go left he's stuck he's got three Chelsea players on him he loses the ball and bang just like that Chelsea snap in it was a lovely example of how with quality, you can just capitalise on a situation. They win the ball there on the halfway line. Immediately, Jackson goes driving through the centre of Wrexham's defence. Toza steps out from the middle of the back three, which uh, in the League 2, I don't think he'd have too much of a problem. But this is Jackson, who was sensational last year in La Liga. And he is fast and skillful enough to burn past Toza few players in the league two will be able to do that we are now in trouble we've got a big gap in the middle of our defense the two wide center backs have to try to tuck in to block that path and that leaves Matson unmarked on the left side of the box and Jackson yeah, good decision making good quality passing uh, drives on as far as he can to pull those two defenders near him and then rolls the perfectly timed correct pass square to pick out Matson, and he's got a simple tapping and we're a goal down but in those opening minutes before that, we had gone forwards and we continued to do so. I would not say we made many real chances in the first half, but we made a lot of half chances, which is good. And we kept Chelsea at arm's length, frankly, even though they looked skillful and broke with quality. Uh, the, the truth of the matter, as Laszlo's tail makes his first appearance of the season, um, the truth of the matter is that actually we pretty much kept them at arm's length. Our defence looked solid, our shape looked good when they came at us. And we forced them to pass the ball back and forth in front of our defence, which was also true in the second half after a big reshuffle. Wrexham's set pieces caused problems for Chelsea, which might sound daft because it wasn't until halfway through the second half that we actually got ahead onto one of our set pieces. But although they were winning all the first balls, we were winning all the second balls. And goodness me, how many times have I said that one of the great dangers of the tools of throw is that we pick up the second ball and we get shots off. 
The first one happened in the sixth minute. Toes with a long throw. It's headed partly away. Mullen in the box gets to the second ball first. Hits his shot. It's blocked. It was goal bound. Twelfth minute then. Anthony Ford beats £40 million left back Mark Kukurea and sweeps in across, which takes a touch off a defender. Lee tries an audacious overhead from 15 yards, which goes off target. Then it's toes of throwing in from the left hand side. He had more space to run up on the left and the right in the first half. It's helped on by a defender, but Dolby cushions it back in nicely, and O'Connell has a decentish chance just outside the six yard box, puts his head at just wide of the left post. So Wrexham holding their own. Chelsea looking quality, but we're holding them at arm's length and we're making half chances off set pieces. But often the difference between teams is just the quality that they've got in a decisive moment. And so the second chance Chelsea make, they take. 42nd minute. And again, it's nice work by Jackson lurking on the edge of the area. Matson comes in from the left-hand side, pings it into Jackson, who pops off a perfectly weighted return pass to Matson, who drives from the edge of the box and puts it inside the bottom right corner. Nice finish. Again, a goal created and executed by quality players. Wrexham do go up the other end, and Lee gets off a final shot of the half for Wrexham, which is blocked. It ricochets out, and Gusto goes breaking away, and Wrexham look really exposed, and the ref blew for half-time. Brizio Pochettino comes out and is not happy and confronts the ref on the pitch, and I can see why, to be fair, but uh, it would have been rather harsh if we'd let in more than two goals in the first half. Second half, Chelsea rotate their team around considerably, and had a lot more pedigree. For example, their star signing Nkunku comes on up front. Raheem Sterling comes on on the left-hand side of attack. Behind him, another England international, Ben Chilwell. Another England international, Gallagher, comes in into the middle of the pitch. This is impressive uh, rebuild. Wrexham make changes too. Uh, on the right-hand side, Ryan Barnett comes on. Will Boyce comes on, Tom O'Connor stepping up into midfield, Cal McFadgen on the left, and Rob Lainton on for Ben Foster. And again, we make a good fist of going at them and trying to make opportunities. Although, Chelsea also start to make better opportunities, a good wall through the, mi the middle, uh, opens up Wrexham's defence. Maybe the one real alarming moment uh, in terms of our organisation. Cassidy, the midfielder, though, isn't... isn't as fast as, say, Sterling or Nkunku, and Linton did really well to just beat him to it on the edge of the penalty area. But then Wrexham are coming forwards, and although I want to talk about individual performances in a moment, let's get one of them done now. Ryan Barnes was terrific down the right and gave Ben Chilwell, England's left back, a hell of a time. He beats him in the 50th minute and pulls the ball back, a great cross across the face of goal. Nobody can quite reach it, and Gilchrist gets to put it behind under pressure at the far post for a corner. At the other end, Chilwell sweeps in a free kick. Wrexham had it partly clear, Sterling with a chance to hit it from the edge of the area, but he slices it wide at the left post. And with 20 minutes left, Wrexham, quite frankly, have held Chelsea at arm's length again, shown some good quality in terms of their energy when they haven't got the ball, and we've been forcing them to pass the ball in front of our defence. Then come a couple of good chances for Wrexham at 2-0 to pull things back. Billy Waters by this time has come on up front, replacing Paul Mullen alongside Ollie Palmer. And Waters looked very sharp, I thought, dropping off into midfield, getting involved. On this occasion, he tackles Hall and, and feeds the ball out wide. Barnett again does well, gets back beyond Chilwell to stick across in. It goes across to the far post and Waters, maybe not expecting it to come to him, takes a, a bad scuff at it from about seven yards out. A real chance for Wrexham to go two up. And immediately we could have been punished for it as Gabriel burst down the right-hand side on the break, swept an excellent cross to the far post beyond Aaron Hayden, who would also come on now. And Raheem Sterling, with a free header on the corner of the six-yard box, puts it over. He should have done better, in all honesty. But Wrexham keep going. Bergstrom, Finnish international goalkeeper, comes on for Chelsea. And immediately... Is nearly punished. 12 minutes, uh, not punished, that's a bit harsh. Don't punish him for coming on. He's entitled to do that. But then he gets beaten. 78th minute, 
and Young takes that set piece I talked about. Honestly, first set piece has been met by a Wrexham player. Young sweeping at a penalty towards the edge of the six-yard box. Palmer makes a diving header. Can't quite get the strength on it he wants, but he directs it towards goal. And Bergson does really well to drop to his left, just on the pitch, and get a hand to it. It drops into the danger area. Chelsea are able to scramble it away. And, yeah, you think, well, well done, Wrexham. 2-0 no down, 10 minutes left. Holding our own and actually starting to make chances. But, like I said, quality will out. And in the 81st minute, it's 3-0. Sterling this time, breaking down the left. He gets a little bit lucky. He cuts back inside onto his right foot. Overruns it, but manages to poke it to Gallagher. And he strikes it from just outside the box. Across Linton and into the bop right corner. Linton will, I think, be disappointed. He got a good hand on it, but could only push it onto the inside of the post. And it's 3-0. Fair play to Wrexham. We come back again. Young again playing a set piece onto the head of Hayden. Hayden nods it down. It hits Cassaday's hand. Uh, I, think, I don't know. I feel this is a bit of a open to interpretation call. On the one hand, Cassaday has turned his back on the ball and is definitely not deliberately handling it. On the other hand, his arm is right out and it hits his hand most definitely. I feel like it's a penalty. You know, carelessness is the same as being deliberate in the way I think the handball rules are ruled. To be fair, though, it all happened quite quickly, and I didn't notice it until I saw the replay. So to be fair to the ref, not blaming him if he didn't see it. It drops to Palmer, and he drives in a close-range volley, which is blocked under the bar. 89th minute now. Wrexham again, coming forwards. Nice interplay between Waters and Davis. Jordan Davis pings some nice passes around in the middle of the pitch. The ball is fed down the left channel for Palmer by Davis, who is running at goal. Cucurella's the only defender back, and he times his tackle brilliantly to deny Palmer a chance to take on the keeper. And within a minute, it's 4 0, and things are starting to get cruel. The 90th minute, Cassaday with a nice ball through for Unkunku after a good, patient spell of passing and movement. And and Kunku is able to clip it home as a straightforward one-on-one finish. I don't even know it wasn't. I just remembered it. <laughs> Linton forces him wide, and Kunku does well to keep his, himself calm and hit the target before defenders can go back and cover it. By this point, McAlinden is on playing in the centre of midfield. I was impressed. There's some really nice touches, actually. Um, but we overcommitted a bit in midfield as Chelsea passed it around at the back in the build-up to that move. And as a consequence, McAlinden found himself in the sort of defensive midfield position and he just couldn't get across to to intercept the ball to Cassidy quickly enough, which I wouldn't blame him for because that's not really his role. And he was playing as a right-sided centre mid as well. So he's he spotted the danger a little bit too late. I don't think you can blame him for that. But like I said, these little margins make a difference when you're up against high-class opposition. And then real cruelty in the 93rd minute when they get the fifth goal and Gabriel again doing well and feeding it in <sighs> cruel by this point I'm starting to think what a harsh mistress football is impressive from Wrexham but yeah quality in the penalty areas and Chelsea came out on top but Wrexham should be very happy with this, I think. Very happy with this. We we didn't have to sit back. It wasn't a, a case of us being under terrible pressure. We came up against a lot of high-quality players and we came out of it holding our heads highly. Uh, performances? Well, just to pick out a few, really. Will Boyle made his debut, of course, or his first appearance for us um, at half-time. I don't know what he's like as a defender because we defended well as units and people didn't they didn't tend to really test him defensively. We held it tight and they passed in front of us basically and then waited for chances to break on us. Uh, I will say he looks to be a very good passer of the ball. He hit a couple of lovely progressive passes into the Chelsea half, so he looked like a, an interesting player. Other interesting performances, Barnett was terrific on the right, Ford looked good on the right as well. In centre mid, like I said, it was interesting to see McAlinden in that central position. Which we've seen him there before. Maybe we remind you, he looked quite sharp in those positions early on in, in his Wrexham career. Lee had some threat about him. But I think, again, it's a nice indication of the difference between the standards of the this Chelsea side and what we are up against. There was a moment in the first half where a set piece 
dropped loose on the edge of the area. Lee got to it. And Chalobah was out really quickly to make a, a terrific block. You see, League 2 the defenders are not going to see the danger that quickly or be athletic enough to come out explosively and make the block. I say that in League 2 or the National League in that situation, six times out of ten, Elliot Lee scores. He struck just the ball well, but it had been red. And that, that sort of thing was, was happening because we were up against better opposition. Up front, Mullen looked very threatening. He's running the channels as always of real danger and confidence, and, and that was that was good to see. That was promising. But I'm reluctant to pick apart performances any further for the simple reason that this is a pre-season match. This is all about getting condition and working on cohesion, and we did that well. This was good. I've got to say as well, hearing pe people in North Carolina chanting for Exum, that was kind of mad, wasn't it? It's a crazy old world, and we're loving it. With a final score of Chelsea 5, Wrexham 0, I'm Mark Griffiths from Wrexham AFC.